race for the 2023 PBR World title turns to Oklahoma this week in the heart of bull country. Tulsa has played host to some of the biggest rides and rankest bulls in PBR history. Justin McBride aboard Voodoo. Two champions right here. Mike White versus Troubadour. Tulsa, come on! J.B. Mooney took down the world's most famous bull, Bushwhacker. It's over! We have seen history! And in 2021, Jose Vitor Lemmy and Whoopa etched the highest rank score ever recorded in the PBR. 97 and three quarters! The best ever! Today, the world's best bovines take center stage. A legendary moment awaits. Championship Sunday starts right now. And he is so talented. Tulsa, let's go! Get it started! Here we go! And it did not take long for that Cooper Tires shoot gate to open up. And Eli, oh, yeah. unfortunately, I mean, he's going to get to the eight seconds. Clint, but he came crashing down hard. Yeah, he did. You could see he is in a lot of pain back there. I mean, beaten up and bruised, no doubt. But he is going to set the pace with the Tech qualified ride. 85 and a quarter points. 85 and a quarter. And that'll set us. Do the math. Ease it up. There's the tractor supply company. Shoot clock. Here we go. You can help him, Oklahoma. I like this. I like that a lot. What do you say? How about a hello to Rafael Enrique Dos Santos? Not just one, but Dos. Dos Santos getting the job done. Bad Spider giving it to him here. Watch this. Brown to the right. Picture perfect by the Brazilian. How about a new leader? 89 points. Hang on, here's an old Tulsa reference. That's like the Zingo at Bell's Amusement Park right there. Five, got a call for him. Here we go. They love it. Ring that bell. And the Wrangler Cowboy gets it done. Oh, good stuff right there. Another TAC qualified ride, our fourth here in the opening round. Solid numbers for Dinner Barbosa, 86 and a quarter. 86 and a quarter right there for Dinner Barbosa. And that unridden bull, and you're gonna hear a lot of that tonight. So here we go, Richardson. Come on, Austin. Come on, Austin, bear down. Just keep working, Austin. Let's go. Yeah. It is a different game at this level. Out of boy, Austin Richardson. Oh. Oh, man, you talk about the record on these bulls like this, and, but these guys at this level are absolutely outstanding at their job. Numbers are in 89 and three-quarter points. Whoa, little A just jumped to the number one spot in Tulsa. Austin Richardson takes the lead, 89 and three-quarter points. Great Great ride there by Austin. Into this first night in Tulsa. Casey says, let's try it. Ooh. And takes a shot on the way out. Sucker punch. A 
Waiting to see the bull scores on this one. Uh, oh, there they are. Yep. 45 that points, the Yeti Bull score. That's that the top is the score of the uh, performance so far. That is the current number one bull in the ABBI Classic standings you just watched, and now you see why. 45 points, the bull score, and from number one, let's go to the next man in line. Here we go, Oklahoma, where are you? Ooh, goodness gracious. But again, that young man deserves everything you're gonna give him. Hey, hey, listen to this. Let me add to the story because Caden Bunch is here as an alternate. Yep. He found out about three hours ago that he was going to be competing here tonight. He knew he had that bull, and look what that young man just encountered. A Yeti bull score of 45 and a half points. Still proud of that young 19-year-old, Caden Bunch. Ooh, man. They did run him as Matt told you for 93. What's he gonna do? Eh, he's gonna dominate. Hey. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And that bull is another one we're going to have to keep our eye on here and watch as he makes his way through. So, Flapjack had 45 and a half points of bull score, and we're going to we're going to repeat that here. The Yeti Bull leaderboard, Ricky Vaughn, going to win this one. And so far, the TulsaTech.edu event leaderboard hasn't moved yet. Look at those Yeti bull scores. A pair of oh, yeah. 45s and a half, a 45. He's got to do his job right here, eight seconds at a time. Keyshawn, let's keep it going. Oh, look out. Great job by our U.S. Border Patrol safety ah! team. I got him. Wait, hot. Nice work. Nice work. Let him out. I'm going to give you the assist on that one. Kind of threw the... Threw the bait out there. <laughs> Man, he thought I haven't. There was a little tiny guy in that hat. Yeah. I haven't seen you dialed in like that, just great out of the gate in a long time. I Those mean, three. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Oh, what the, oh, oh! Show it again. That's the best pass OU fans have seen all year. Careful. Oh, oh. careful. Oh. careful. Alfonso Kichino, right here from Brazil, making his debut. Chino gets it done. What? Clark says eight seconds. <laughs> How about that? Alfonso. Talk to me. What you're telling me. Yes. Is there's a new Brazilian bull rider that nobody's heard of that's really good. Right. Here. Well, Here's that way. The 25 year old. I, watched, I actually watched this guy last fall down in Brazil on some YouTube live bull riding, and he was outstanding. And he comes in here and handles it like a pro. How about 87 and a half points? Yeah. Wait, hey, did you just pick that? What are you doing with that? Hey, hey, I'm here for you. And what exactly are you yeah, going to do for him? That happens again. I'll rope him and I'll pull him down. I've seen it on Yellowstone. Right, right. Wings should call him for him. Oh! Together, you each got a horn. Great job. That bull. Watch the replay right here. 
And Wingson gets to the eight seconds and then watch this. Let's watch it again back and this bull says, yeah, right there. Look at him. I'll tell you. He's nuzzling him. Well, he was, nah, 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 nah. Either that or he was trying to eat him, one of the two. Uh, the score is in. 82 and three quarter points. 82 and three quarters for Wingson. I agree. I agree on that. I thought that was a little high. Stop oh, it. Did. Come on. All right, Brady. Here we go. Come on. Look at this. Great job by the U.S. Border Patrol safety team. And Randolph strikes. Brady Randolph letting it all hang out here and absolutely dominating Dan Post. Watch this. Absolutely no problem by the Pennsylvania man. Numbers in 85 and three quarter points for Randolph. This bull's not had anybody like Luciano on his back. Watch this. Yeah. Yep. Luciano De Castro. Outstanding. That is why. He is inside the top 10 in the world. 84 and a quarter points, 84 and a quarter for DeCastro. That is going to throw him inside the top 10. He's setting eighth right now. And again, one score on the board to yeah. carry that over to tomorrow where the top 10 It's huge. It is huge with this pin of bulls. These guys are going to face any Eight second ride again. I hate sound redundant, but the facts are the facts. Great pit of bulls. These guys are facing here in Tulsa as always. Chasey! Got right your way, Andy. He's stealing, he's stealing your thunder. 82 and a half points, 82 and a half for the Iceman getting it done, doing his job. That's what you got to do if you want to win for a PBR World Championship title. That's what he wants. And he's taking that first step here of taking care of business. Jose Detour Levy. Now the question is, is it going to be enough to win the round either way? Lemmy is going to be great on this replay. Look at this. I mean, almost flawless performance, Matt. Let's look at just the full rider score. 45 and three quarters for just Jose. The numbers are in and 88 and three quarter points for that guy right there. Of round number one with a huge 89 and three quarter points. Ladies and gentlemen, from Dallas, Texas, your winner of round number one, it is Austin Richardson.
Center is the centerpiece of today's duels. Both the Cowboys and Bulls know this real estate well. This Bulls record bears it out. 22 times out of the shoots, only written once. Now, this will be interesting to see. Are we going to see some flags because of the contact? I would think so. Yeah, there it is. So we are going to see Vast Binder again. We're going to see it. He smokes it right there, shoots him out of it forward there, hits flat. Ugh. Hey, and whether that bull hits himself or not, he's still going to have some jumps like that in him. This is the first real marquee matchup we've got to see so far here in this round. Uh, it's got potential to be 90 right at it. Crossover likes the right, going to get in the air. Another dynamic eight from Dalton, a little askew at the end. We'll see how much the judges discount the ride, so to speak. But Dalton Castle be becomes the first qualified ride of round two. Yeah, and that's a lot of effort being put out by Castle. And that's a little bit knowing this bull, the way he does, the history he has with him. He is not going to let this one put him on the <laughs> ground. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He's been so good to us, and I can't thank Riley enough for hauling him here. Craig. How about Eduardo? While Kate finished up that interview with Dalton Castle, Eduardo's going to leapfrog him in the round standings for sure, because that's one of those from Fast Eddie that quickly reminds you how good he is. 88 and a quarter. Well, this is how you do it right here. Bull kind of gets close, has to hold up for a second, then gets going. And Eduardo, that's, that's control. You see his head's down the whole time, never misses the front end when it comes to him. That's a fantastic ride. Oliver, meanwhile, had that great result in Indiana a couple weeks ago in Indianapolis, but since really aside from that has not been a season to remember. Hoping to change that here. This gives him every opportunity right here. How about that for composure? As Kyler Oliver goes the distance with a fantastic correction around five seconds that kept him in it. This will definitely rival for the round lead. And these are the kind of choices that you have to make in the blink of an eye. Gets a little hunched up, a little top heavy, but he refuses to let it be over right there. He does not give up, he does not quit. He gets stronger, fixes it, finishes a great ride. Well, you weren't kidding about this pairing. It's now at the top of the leaderboard for the round. 89 and a quarter. This is Joao Lucas aboard Detroit lead. And that just turned into a fantastic ride. Yes, that is the Detroit lean that we have seen in championship rounds on numerous occasions. And Joao just dominated him. Look, this guy, when, when he's focused on the bull's back, he's as good as, as anybody out there. It's just he has a hard time maintaining that focus. His head will get picked up and get to wondering. But when he keeps his eyes on him, the dude can ride, as he just showed. He doesn't have to have a bull to fit his style. He's got a style that fits a lot of different bulls. And he gets along with Mighty Mike splendidly. Mighty Mike didn't want to cover much of that real estate because he just started spinning immediately once the gate swung open. That was a that was a really good job by Eli there. A lot of adjustments throughout that ride. And that turns out to be huge because with his second score, he is going to move to the overall lead. That ride right there was worth 87 and three quarters. Let's think about this pairing, Lemmy versus the show. Well, I, this could be a huge one. I mean, this could be a, a round winning type of an outing right here. Uh, the, the one score we've seen on this bull, Ramon DeLima, is 89 points on him. So 
Put uh, Jose in that scenario, I, I, and you think yeah. it's even more, right? Right. No disrespect to Ramon, but he's not known for dressing up the Bulls. He's a top up. Well, we are going to see a lead change, even with contact leaving the shoots. Lemmy locked down the show, and this crowd loves it. He only needs 84 and a half to move to the overall lead. He gets 88 and a quarter. Well, and look, here's, here's some of the reasons why. Like, the bull hits himself and goes to the right. This is what makes Lemmy so legit, is now a direction isn't important, right? Like, that bull's supposed to be the left, but he hits himself and goes to the right. That, he does, that doesn't mess him up. He understands where his body needs to be, and it's forward. Mm -hmm. He gets that now, so now you take a direction out of it, makes the guy so hard to beat. Let's send it back down to Hunting Trip, starting to get his feet wet at this level, only four outs, he's bucked everybody off, so that's the way you want to trend. Whoa! Oh, runs his record to a perfect five and oh, with an exclamation point. This is a fantastic bull right here. And we'll, we'll get to see what kind of contact there is here leaving. You know, that bull, he might have grazed it, but it didn't change anything about him. You know, he continued, he continued his same trajectory. Yeah, that's, I think the judge, that's a great no call right there because it did not change the bull one bit. We've seen some great examples, Mac, throughout this round of the communication that a rider has with his whole team. No! 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 UConn simply outworks a round one winner. Gets him on the ground just under five. Yeah, and something you don't see happen to Austin very long. See, it's heads down right there, really good. This little bull gets stronger and stronger. You see him start trying to work it up. You see his chin snap up. When your chin snaps up, let your upper body come back. Bull starts taking control. This bull's going to be so great when the gate opens. Whoa. Well, the fireworks were there. Bread basket delivered. Cooper Davis couldn't convert. 3.8. No, and, and his rope comes out of his hand here, and it might be a good thing. And Cooper ain't going to agree with this, but it might have been a good thing his rope popped out of his hand. The way he's getting him raised up, if his rope don't come out, something's got to give. But what a fantastic day from Bread Basket. They've been 90 before when they danced. Kaiki needs to nod. Here we go. But Pacheco seems to have carved a path to the championship round. Second score, he's in. If somehow this becomes a buck off, he's not. Now that rope coming out of his hand is caused right here. Two jumps into it. See how much pressure that just put on his hand? Like he is, his arm is straight. The bull's four foot off of the ground. That's just grit. Really strong. That's from the middle of the week, the work that Pacheco does during the week is what got that ride right there. He does indeed get a score and then sticks the landing. 85 points. So round number two had a little bit of everything. 10 qualified rides, but it really was the setup for the championship round. And Jose Vitor Lemmy. What more can he do? He has put himself in position for yet another event win. If he can convert, it will be his fourth event win of this season. Meanwhile, Manuelito de Sosa Jr. does indeed get in on 86 and a half. After ascending to a familiar spot last week, two-time PBR world champion Jose Vitor Lemme looks to further his dominance on his way to what he hopes is a third gold buckle. And standing in the way of one of run, one rider's stellar weekend is a bovine ace, Ricky Vaughn. He's more than happy to bring the heat and dare you to compete. 
Well, we start with Brady Randolph, and if you're new to this game, so to speak, the guys who start the championship round, they don't get a pick. They're left with the bull that nobody else wants. Oh! Shades of what we've seen Cool Whip do every single time. He has a move that sends shudders down the backs of these riders. And it's all about the forward in the jumps that he's taken. These aren't going to be big scores for Cool Whip. This isn't going to help him in a quest to win a world title because it's just one, two. He doesn't even get a chance to really get going, but this bull has got a lot of power. Eduardo Aparecido against Blue Duck getting his opportunity. Really a good bull here. Likes the left. I think you should be prepared for anything with this bull. He's got some good up and down to him. If Eduardo will ride that part of it, direction will take care of itself. Blue Ducks already had 10 outs so far this season. Only ridden once by Boudreaux Campbell. And it's going to stay that way as Eddie goes flying. That one only lasts two. Yeah, and it's all, it's all in the head right here. You watch Eduardo's head, Blue Duck, Leaves out of here. He's got his eyes on him, picks his head up. No shot. Like, the level of commitment that it takes to ride a bull of that caliber is through the roof. Your head has got to be down on it. On the clock, that means the judges feel he's had ample time to nod. If it gets down to zero, well, here, here we, we go. Oh, legend living up to the hype yet again as this one only goes about one and a half. Legends for real. He's uh, he's all there. He's big, scary, mean. Gets out of there pretty good with him. Look at these bull scores coming in. 46 and a half. Kyler Oliver showcases how good he can be. Our first qualified ride of the championship round, and we're probably gonna see a lead change. He needs 88. And Smokestack, that's gonna give him a lot more. 92. This is good stuff right here. I just love seeing the fight that Kyler Oliver puts out because this wasn't a guaranteed deal every single jump. This bull was trying him on, and he just kept firing back. That's a career high. Austin Richardson has his career best from here in Tulsa. He's chosen Yellowknife in this championship round. A bull that comes from Canada, but has been making waves down here. Austin Richardson comes up less than six tenths of a second short. Seven and change aboard Yellowknife, and that was going to be a ride that got him close to the lead. Look, this is a great effort by Austin Richardson, and I love the trajectory that this kid's on right here. This is a big, strong bull in Yellowknife, and he's got a great idea and a great plan of he's going to shuffle his feet and go at this bull, but you got to be faster and aggressive at it. You see him letting go here. As he lets go with this foot, you have got to be fast to get back into contact with this bull because if not, he's going to run you back and put you down. Great idea. Just got to execute it with a little more right now put on it. Still only seen one qualified ride so far in the championship round. Kyler Oliver will Winkson De Silva add his name to that qualified ride column facing Montana Jacket. That Montana jacket fits like a glove. Da Silva is going to move to the overall lead. Our first man three for three. Yeah, and Da Silva's coming in with low scores on two. His plan, knock them all down, and he knocks this one down in a big way for a big score. 90 and a quarter. That's a career best for him.
Really a good ride right there. A chance for Lemmy to run his record to three and one against this bull. Don't get locked down in here. There we go. Makes it look not only easy, but at times effortless. Kaiki Pacheco moves to the number one spot here in Oklahoma. That's good stuff right there. Pacheco, that one was trying him. Stepping ahead, putting a lot of pressure on his hand. And look, I, I've said it before, and at times I think Pacheco makes things look a little too easy. He doesn't make a lot of big moves. He doesn't get out of control. Uh, you know, that, that's a handful right there that he just rode. 88 and three quarters on this occasion, the lowest he's been when he's made it to eight on this bull, but he'll take it because now he sits at top of everyone else. And Denner Barbosa, of course, focused on the back of Ricky Vaughn. The only treat he'd like is to make it to eight. And this bull does not like allowing that. No, oh, this is such a cool bull right here. He's as neat as one gets with the athletic ability he has. Oh. Guess what? Ricky Vaughn brought the heat, but Denner Barbosa was hotter. Wow, you talk about staring down the fastball. Ah. Hey, this was, there was some awesome stuff, right? From Ricky Vaughn to Denner, but Man, he comes down with his free hand really close to the eight seconds. Like his internal clock might have went off a little bit early. This is wild right here. He's wanting him over his head. Dinner bows up, kind of gets set down here back in the game. That wild style helped make it look like an incredible. Oh my See gosh, he I'm reached saying? for yes, his rope too yes, early. Yes. Great eye by you, and I think they're going to not only take this away since it showed eight in the arena, but the judges are just gonna do their job. That is Denner's fault. Oh no, 100%, I that's mean, just a mental, that's just a mental error right there. Oh, what could have been. Yeah, he's gonna be 95 right there, you know? That's just, yeah, a mental, mental mistake right there. The score disappears into the ether, and it took the air out of this crowd. And Eli Vassbinder Mac has a chance to put himself in a position to win his first ever career event. All he needs is 83 and a half aboard Tulsa time. Well, he'll jump all over that. He gets the qualified ride here, and this Tulsa time, I really really like this bull because here's the thing with I've seen right-handed guys on him and the bulls out there big wild jumps around to the right I see left-handed guys get on him he takes big wild jumps and goes to the left this bull just wants guys to stay on him. well to that point what is it from a rider perspective that made him the second pick overall I think just that he's really good to ride he's a showy bull but I don't think his difficulty level is that of like a legend or cool whip. Okay. But he's got a lot of a lot of show to him. Like he takes a lot of what I call snapshot jumps. His back stays flat. He's got just enough kick to keep a guy up on his rope, um, and he's going to turn back and and have really good timing. Go! Binder may have just found the promised land. He has put himself in position to win his first ever event. He needed 83 and a half. He's going to get a whole lot more. 90 and a half. Well, and Bass Binder's been lights out all weekend long. This is a guy that's banged up, got a sore riding hand, and He's taking the pressure off of his hand, though, by how good he's riding. Great job from Vassbinder all weekend. Tulsa time in Tulsa. It all worked out, so it comes down 
to the final dance. Jose Vitor Lemmy, with his first pick, went with I'm Legit 2. And you could pick out of the past, Mac, right? He has been on this bull so many times and had so many great rides. I would look for the bull to have a, a big day, but not be big enough to get Jose on the ground. Okay, but right over the past couple seasons, we have seen Jose stumble at times. I'm not trying to telegraph that, right? But there have been some moments when we thought it was a given, sure. and we just played right and showed the stat line. He's ridden this bull four out of five times. Bottom line, I go back to what you always say. Can't take anything for granted. You ride him jump for jump. All he needs is 86 and three quarters. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed in this sport, but you got to go with, you're looking at one of the best guys that we've ever seen in the PBR on a really good bull that he matches up well against. I'm taking the guy for the win. But how about that? I'm legit too. Shows he's got some game. Lemmy goes down, and Eli Vastbinder is a winner for the first time in his career. All the history of Tulsa, he's now a part of it. Lemmy falls by the wayside. The silver lining, he does protect his number one ranking. Pacheco has moved up to third overall and go all the way to the bottom. Eli Vassbinder with his win moves to 16th in the world. He is the one that got Vassbinder his first win. So good to see Eli battle through all the injuries that he's went through all season long. Put it aside and get the job done. He takes Tulsa time the distance. Everybody was cheering for Eli. Make sure to tune in next Sunday at noon Eastern for the PBR Championship Round from Eugene, Oregon. For Justin McBride, Kate Harrison, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.